You're watching Capital View, Sunday morning talk focused on the political scene in Arkansas. Time now to talk some business with two of the top officials from the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, Executive Director Clint O'Neill, uh, Director of the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Development Division, Esperanza Masana Crane. Thank you both for being here. Yeah, thanks thank for, you having for having us. Yeah, all right. Let's begin with the fact that Clint looks jet lagged because I think he spent some time in Asia traveling halfway around the world a few weeks ago. How was that trip? When are we going to see some outcome from it? And uh, just give everybody a little overview of what you guys did. Sure. Well, thanks, Roby. Thanks again for having us on. Happy Easter to all your viewers. Yeah. The, the trip to Asia was fantastic. We went to South Korea and Japan. In Japan, we have a lot of companies that already in, have invested in Arkansas. So we, we got to visit with the C-suite of a lot of those companies, uh, a few prospects as well, hopefully some, some announcements uh, coming on that. In South Korea, it was a lot of uh, building new relationships. Mm -hmm. And anytime we travel with Governor Sanders, we're, we're able to meet with companies. Uh, having the governor with us certainly opens doors. Governor Sanders has star power that, that people want to see her, they want to hear from her. And so uh, I think we did a very effective job of elevating uh, the image of what it's like to do business in Arkansas. I would think that this might be uh, works both ways. You're looking for export opportunities in those countries and in that region, as well as trying to pull in businesses that might want to locate in Arkansas. Is that accurate? That's right. Uh, the, the, the majority of our conversations were more around FDI, foreign direct investment. Uh, there are a lot of companies in both those countries that are looking to the United States long term to invest. And, and we feel like uh, we did a good job of putting Arkansas on the map for some yeah. of these companies. I think they're both like sixth and seventh in those countries in uh, Arkansas exports, I think, also. All right, Esperanza, you've been busy, too, because there's a lot happening with uh, small business and entrepreneurship development in Arkansas. And you guys have kind of reorganized in that area, too. Tell me a little bit about that reorganization. And specifically, you guys just issued a new contract for startups commercialization this past week. Tell me a little yes. bit about that. Yes, that is correct. We have been really busy and we consolidated last July the Small Business and Entrepreneurship Development Division, uh, all of our various services to small businesses and entrepreneurs into one. And so we focus in three different areas, if you will. One would be science and technology. Uh, then we have minority and women owned business and then working on our entrepreneurial ecosystem support. Um, the goal is to provide you know, a better service to our, to our customers, to entrepreneurs and small businesses and being sync and being one. And yes, so we just announced March 1, a new contract is the Arkansas Technology Commercialization Center, which is a program that is designed to assist technology-based technology entrepreneurs into scaling their bus businesses into viable businesses. Um, and we awarded that contract to Startup Junkie uh, Consulting. They do a lot of great work. They They're out of Fayetteville, but they do stuff really statewide, but they are top notch. Jeff Amarine up there is, yeah. uh, he's a little bit of a go-getter, yeah. isn't he? <laughs> yes, all of them are, yeah. So this yeah. was uh, Secretary uh, of Commerce Hugh McDonald really has a big emphasis on helping small businesses and this entrepreneurship development. How is that kind of, I'm not trying to ask one's better than the other, but with his new leadership, how is that a higher priority now? Well, it is a higher priority for us in the sense that we really want to have a focus, a statewide focus, um, and that's one of the reasons why we consolidated. I think having um, this statewide commercialization technology center have a statewide reach will be very important, trying to reach a variety of corners in the state. I know um, Startup Junkie is already um, looking and hiring for different uh, regional managers throughout the state. So if anybody wants to apply, you know, you, they can find more information on their website. Of course, AEDC is very focused on working statewide um, with various entrepreneurs. And we believe, you know, that by investing in small businesses and entrepreneurs, we are helping that creation, the job creation component that ultimately, you know, helps our Kansans grow. Clint, you've had a few announcements of job creation lately from Russellville to uh, the Little Rock Port. Um, there's some announcements in uh, Fort Smith e even this week. So what, what, what have the last few months been like? What do you see happening kind of in the pipeline in the months to come? Sure, I, I'm, I'm very encouraged by the results we've had in economic development in Arkansas from the three areas that we really focus on, from entrepreneurship to helping existing companies to recruiting new ones. So as you mentioned, Secretary McDonald came in with a, 
a focus on all three of these areas, entrepreneurship. One of the first things we did was uh, promote Esperanza into her role in rolling out this statewide effort. It's, it's very important to us that we help communities all around the state with uh, the, the major metro centers and rural economic development. So uh, from the announcements that you mentioned, uh, creating jobs in a lot of different parts of the state, a lot of different industries as well. Uh, some that, that we've seen a particularly uh, strong focus on or it would be around the steel industry, it would be around food and beverage, uh, around logistics, and so we're very encouraged about those. I, I think in terms of the pipeline, the pipeline is as full as it's ever been. Yeah. Uh, Jay Cheshire has mentioned that to me in a recent conversation that he said in all of his years, and he's he's got a few more decades than all of us, <laughs> so take that, Jay. Um, but he. <laughs> He said it's the busiest he has ever seen it. Why, why is that? Is it because of the health of the economy? Is it because there's just a lot of cash on the sidelines, people ready to invest? What do you think's driving a lot I, of I this? do think that's a part of it. We have seen, you know, I remember when, when you know, 50, $80 million projects were, were about the, the, the top you would see. Now we're seeing RFIs for $100 million, $500 million projects, projects in the billions. And so uh, billions and billions of dollars in the pipeline. We were taking a look the other day, and I don't want to announce it publicly, but uh, what it would look like if we won every project in the pipeline. How many billions of dollars that would be, how many thousands of jobs that it would be. But uh, the, the, the pipeline's very healthy, and, and I'm very encouraged by the the, where those projects are looking. You various can spill the, the beans state. if you want to. I mean, this show is built for you to, to, to reveal news of what might be an upcoming announcement. I don't think the governor or Hugh McDonald or anybody would be upset with you just <laughs> exposing, you know, one or two economic prospects. So you might violate a, a non-disclosure agreement, but. Yeah, I better keep those close <laughs> to the best for now. All right. Um, Esperanza, what do you have coming up in um, small business? I think you guys have uh, some sort of forum that's coming up. And then I think, too, we, we reported not too long ago that you guys have certified mm -hmm. a lot of um, new minority and women-owned businesses. Kind of what's that program? Why is that certification important? Yes, the, so the state offers a certification program for minority and women-owned businesses. And that is intended to help them, especially as they pursue um, opportunities with uh, the government in terms of contracting and we are very fortunate to work with a lot of partners and I think we've been more strategic on how we we implement those trainings for certification so yeah we certified 50 businesses last year um, compared to you know 22 more than the previous year um, all of them can be found on our website and it is important because a lot of a lot of contractors want to find minority and women owned subcontractors and they can find them there um, what does someone have to do to get that certification I mean just in a nutshell they'll go to our website and they'll, all the information is there under certification but also apex accelerator is a very good organization where they can go in and they'll they'll be able to give them more instruction in terms of the different certifications that are available. And when they come out of that with the certification, does it, is that something that they market? Is there somebody looking at your database for yes. that? Yes, mm -hmm. we have an online directory with about 2,000 you know, uh, minority of women owned businesses that are, is constantly searched, not only in Arkansas by procurement managers from state or federal government, but also outside the state. Yeah. Um, and so it's really up to the business to be smart about you know, using that certification, marketing themselves, and uh, y you know, using it to their advantage. And yeah. the Why is it important to have that type of program? That I mean, both of you can speak to mm -hmm. that. I mean, what, what's the importance of making sure that we have, that we're sp spreading that wealth around, to that lack of a better phrase? Well, I, I, you know, I'd say for one, there are a lot of companies out there that, that have come to us and say, you know, we want to do business with small businesses in Arkansas. We want to be a champion for Arkansas. And, and so whether it's a preference or it's a mandate, uh, company guidelines for small businesses, for minority and women owned businesses, it's important to us to help those businesses to elevate themselves and, and how do you do business. Everything from our partnership with the SBTDCs to the entrepreneurship support organizations around the state to uh, marketing plans, business plans, um, just that certification is that seal of approval that these yeah. companies have been in business for at least two years. Uh, they've met a threshold where they can fulfill these contracts. And so to see these Arkansas 
companies, small businesses get contracts with with government agencies, with private companies. It's encouraging. They're for us. reliable. Is what you're That's saying. right. So, um, as far as you got a matchmaking conference yes. coming up, tell so me a bit about that. So this is perfect for a lot of minority women-owned businesses. Every year we do a matchmaking event, which is a literally a speed dating event. You know, 15 minutes. You are in front of a buyer that is either you know federal or or local government or state government, and you know you pres you talk about your business, and it's a great networking opportunity for businesses. Last year. Uh, we got an email after the matchmaking, a couple months after, from Tyson Foods, and they were awarding a contract to a business, a minority business, that they met at the matchmaking two years ago. So it's a great opportunity for networking. You know, um, you may not be guaranteed a contract right off the bat, but if you, again, you know, you work your business, you're able to do the right networking. It's a great opportunity. It'll be uh, May 29th at the Clinton Presidential Center. All right, and I assume your website has more details and on that. And you do have to register to participate. Yeah, Very for important. sure. Yes. You can't yes. just show up that day. <laughs> no, and do that. no, no, no. We're back with more right after this.